a very warm welcome to all of you and uh, thank you for joining us today today's topic of the webinar is how to scale up your design team using bim automation before we jump into the topic i would like to introduce our ceo mr varun bhartia varun is innovator technologist entrepreneur and visionary leader in the field of 3d varun is a leader who is driven by his passion for enabling businesses around the globe to work more efficiently he has a total experience of 15 years in the industry after working with the giants like ge and with the vision to automate the design workflows he started encircle tech in 2012 he completed his dual degrees from iit madras he has profound experience working in the 3d visualization software industry so put up your hands together and varun the stage is all yours thank you chaitanya and thank you all for joining and a very warm welcome to this webinar i am glad that you found time to join this webinar let me make it more interesting for you and let me start with a riddle do you know what is common between completion of some of the world's uh, tallest buildings like merdeka tower in malaysia or the skinniest skyscraper in the world new york steinway tower and dip in sales of men's underwear believe me or not these events are linked to onset of global recession let me explain federal reserve chairman alan greenspan came up with men's underwear index for predicting recession when the money is tight sales goes down why is recession related to construction of skyscrapers british economist andrew lawrence developed the skyscraper index in 1999 for example completion of chrysler and empire state buildings in new york preceded the great depression Andrew observed that this pattern right from the 1800s when a project such as of such a magnitude receives the necessary funding uh, to start the construction the country's economy can be viewed as one that has expanded so much that it is likely to burst and in the near future uh, with very high probability hence the building of gigantic skyscraper indicate that expansionary economy has peaked and needs to contract itself by going through a recessionary phase in near future and now recently both this merdeka tower and steinway tower have been completed so we know what to expect with a global recession knocking on our doorstep hiring new workforce is a catch 22 situation with the projections of global economy shrinking is it wise to increase the cost of manpower on the other hand if we stop the new hiring will this impact our future growth so we need to solve this problem today's webinar is about how to work with available manpower and how to increase the output from your existing team i am the ceo of technology company encircle tech and i believe technology driven automation can solve lot of these challenges i am going to talk about how some other industries were able to scale up quickly and add a lot of workforce in their operation but without increasing their cost i am going to talk about how software can solve the expertise problem lack of people problem quality issues because of human errors i will show you some of the case studies that uh, of n circle then talk about my learnings after executing many software automation projects so a whole lot to cover but i am sure it will be worth your time so let's get started in the past 10 years of n circle we served some of the best customers in the industry from startups to fortune 500 companies i have been a speaker at many conferences talking about different technologies and understanding day to day process of different organization what i found was many companies do not know inefficiencies that they operate with they are too involved in the process and too busy to improve they want to continue doing what they have been doing just like gentleman in the picture above when we started our bim services division in n circle it was difficult to add people to the team but thanks to software automation we were able to speed up the process 
and at the same time control any QC issues that may happen because of new people in the team. Today, I'm going to talk about how you can apply same ideas in your company and grow your team to the next level. Let's look at some recession facts again. According to economists at Bank of America, inflation, the war, and the lockdowns in China have completely derailed global recovery. From Goldman Sachs index to a skyscraper index to men underpant index, to higher interest rates, to soaring oil prices, market turmoil, all indicators of, are indicators of tightest financial conditions since 2009. So it is quite imminent that recession is about to come. But now let's talk about impact of recession on the construction industry. Project backlogs, which is lifeline of the future work for construction industry is reducing. Contractors are required to take cut on their profit to kickstart new projects. It is going to be tricky 2022, but even tougher 2023 for construction industry. So it is clear that recession is likely to come and construction industry needs technology and automation to brace for the impact and explore new growth opportunities. But these are external, external factors and they keep changing as the world changes. Let's look at what has been happening inside the company. Many of us are working from home. Some of us have professional setup and some less. And we've also heard people saying that they really, really want to go back to office. Why is that many of us can't work from home? The answer is simple, because there are too many distractions. Distractions lead to mistake and some, sometimes rather painful ones. We all have been there some time or the other, some or the other time. This overall affects your design team in many, many ways. Lack of coordination, quality of work, different operational or manual errors, decrease in productivity and many more. So we need a mechanism to control such mistakes. We need a solution. So what is the solution? How can we solve such a problem? Let's look at companies that have added a lot of workforce in short span of time. Probably you've heard about this example. Common example is Uber. Uber has about 3.9 million drivers. It is far more than some of the largest companies across the globe. Why did it emerge as a leader in spite of many existing taxi unions, service providers, and so on? The answer is Uber created a system in which there is no need for high-skilled and trained people. Because of very good navigation app, drivers did not need to know a whole lot about different places in the city. And any driver could operate in any part of the city or any part of the world. Drivers with different languages could operate and deliver service. It reduces expertise or skill set expected from the, any driver. It provides automatic updates to all concerned parties. It does not allow for any uh, room for any error and performance measurement is very accurate and transparent. It provided a lot of flexibility to drivers to work as per their preferred time slot. Also think about the control room operator uh, who was coordinating all the bookings. Earlier, the operator was trained to know different localities in the city. He was coordinating with different taxi drivers and at the same time communicating with customers. Operators required a lot of training. They were the bottlenecks, but an app changed all that. This automation and this app allowed you Uber to reduce the level of expertise required and access a very large pool of workforce to choose from in very short span of time. Another way automation enabled Uber was to scale up customer service. Uber handles more than 1.5 billion rides every quarter. Instead of scaling up customer service manpower, Uber did a lot more with lot less by automating the whole customer service process while improving customer experience considerably. In nutshell, they took a traditional service 
that is getting from point A to point B and completely automated every step of that service experience from selection, booking and ordering to automated payments, including automated customer service. Why can't we apply at least 10% of this in construction industry? As we all know, construction industry is least automated industry and a lot of us still underestimate the benefits of automation. Construction industry needs to adopt automation first approach in every, every step. Let's look at how automation addresses different issues and how it can help scale up design team faster without increasing the cost. Expertise. Obviously you can't match expertise of something like as you see in the video, but then what can you do? You can either train people to do something very, very complex, or you can altogether reduce the complexity of the task itself. At N Circle, we created a solution that packaged the expertise of your most valuable engineers into a simple software. This opens up companies to hire people with less expertise but deliver same or better results. People shortage. You can hire more people to get more output or get more output from same number of people with automation. We created solutions that automate many manual and many repetitive tasks, thus increasing productivity and reducing the pressure of hiring more people. Quality issues. We all know whenever we add new people to the team, there are many, many quality issues. You can add even more people to perform more QC checks or you can automate it QC, you can automate the entire QC check process and let machines do the QC work. Again, we created so many QC checks that team cannot pass any faulty model anywhere downstream. Lack of real-time data. You can wait for people to update status proactively. Uh, uh, state, update the status or proactively gather information from files submitted. We've created a system to capture status automatical for, uh, automatically from any file that is submitted in a cloud repository. Example, BIM 360 or Google Drive or Box or whatever. Generally, it is my observation that organizations take about 15 days to consolidate all the data for management to make any decision or observations. So they are effectively taking decision on the data that is 15 days old. With automation, we brought it down to one day. Now, let me show you some example projects and their benefits. Our first case study is about data standardization to fix leakage in co-working space utilization. Management of this company wanted to minimize leakage in the system and standardize ROI based on number of sellable seats in office space. They observed that some office buildings were not reporting utilization correctly. It was very difficult to come up with benchmark for ROI of such cases. The office spaces had some seats which are much bigger in size, some seats which are much smaller in size. They would have customized some portion of the building as pantry and there were so many variations in office designs. All this was required to be standardized. The biggest challenge was they wanted to standardize 500 plus different office space data in less than six months a large number of quality checks to be performed before any acceptance and team had to rely on multiple sources of information to create the final model. Mm -hmm. What did Encircle do? We automated many, many steps in the modeling process. We implemented, we, we automatically fetched data from BIM 360, upgraded Revit files to latest version automatically, we placed I have replaced families in the model automatically, uh, automatic room placement, creating filters, shared parameters, DWG exports, many of these steps were done automatically. Not only was the modeling process automated, even the QC checks were automated. Again, we used to get the data from the 
cloud get the uh, perform all the qc checks whether it is revit warnings parameters standard families and create a very easy to use dashboard so that every modeler used to get feedback right then and then as he was working on the project overall result 500 plus buildings standardized with excellent quality and uniformity within 6 months let me talk about second automation which is scan to bim automation large energy company needed to create bim model from point cloud data and extract quantification for heat loss calculation and energy sustainability improvements the challenges while working on this project includes a very high volume of houses to be converted into bim model about 100 plus every week requires a huge workforce without automation moreover there were experts required for converting such point cloud data into bim model and lastly quantification output which is about calculating all the uh, heat loss uh, was very uh time consuming and as well as lot error prone so the first and most important solution that we created is to automatically create bim model uh from the point cloud using machine learning so as seen in the slide you can see that the data point cloud data goes to our scan to bim server and it automatically generates first revit model uh we process uh this data on the cloud and create entities like walls doors windows floors all automatically few things are to be still checked by the manual person as a qc check or even add few entities like roof but once this uh bim model is created even all the calculation and quantification output was automated in single click we generated lots and lots of data like surface quantification room quantification ceiling quantification and so much more this enabled n circle to deliver same output with less number of people this helped us reduce the cycle time from scanning to technical reports of heat loss calculation used to take 7 days and now it takes only 2 days I want to talk about one more case study before we jump to the next section. This organization wanted to extract data from about 500 plus different files from BIM 360 for the CEO to analyze the uh, variation or distribution of their uh, spaces. Manually, this would have taken four weeks, but with automation, we delivered this data within one week with single person involvement. that is power of automation it allowed n circle to do more with less now this takes us to next section of our presentation what are some good learnings from all the automation projects that we implemented obviously first question that comes to mind is what to automate to be honest as you can see in the picture you can automate anything if you have time we find some of craziest automation around the world but we need to prioritize what to automate so implement analytics and measurements we need to find every step in your process that are time consuming and repetitive in nature you can't really make informed business decision without proper analytics analytics allow you to quantify the effects of any changes and help in optimization of your business process the biggest benefit of utilizing power of analytics is being able to identify what's redundant and efficiently improve your process to give you maximum roi learning number 2 check the feasibility of automation and efforts required once you have identified a few tasks that are time consuming and repetitive in nature you need to estimate the effort to implement those solutions you can then easily strategize on the task to be automated by dividing them into four quadrants things to proceed things to consider things to avoid or things to investigate obviously 
tasks which have high impact and low effort are the first ones to implement now some of you might know all of these as very common things uh, maybe you have already implemented this in your respective projects and so on but let me bring up few more points that perhaps you may not have considered it is very very important to check the error rate when you are automating something if you are implementing qc checks really minimize false positives or false negatives people don't trust the system if you have too many false positives or too many false negatives this can be make or break for a lot of software's automation about 50% of the projects fail because it fails to win the trust of end users the next learning is about in expectations in usual scenarios there is a huge gap between expectation and reality we fail to understand the expectation of end user and we deliver something very different if automation is not being discussed from the beginning the roll out of automation to wider audience is very very difficult and people don't want to accept something that they have not been discussing or prep for healthy communication between automation and your modeling team is of paramount importance the next important thing is to choose the right technology a lot of companies have created automation using dynamo or other such things such scripting languages are very easy to use but scalability is very very low and there are challenges with distribution as well so what are some alternatives create a plugin for example you can excuse me create revit plugin or you can completely use geometry kernel and neutral file formats like ifc so that you are not tied to a specific uh, bim software or you can process things completely on the cloud for example using force design automation api each of these approaches have certain pros and cons some are costly some are uh, quick to implement some take very long time to implement i'm happy to discuss each of these if you want to get into details uh, further the next important thing is minimum adoption barrier people are very very resistant to change as we also saw in one of the slides pre the start of the webinar so you need to design your system such that it takes it like it does not ask your users to drop their current system and move to something very very different create something that has an easy transition works within their environment some solutions in the past have failed because they ask user to push all their data into their cloud platform and then operate from there bigger the transition bigger the change that user has to go to uh, go through the higher is the resistance for adoption you can even consider lot of things to be automated using automatic triggers for example qc check uh, you can for qc check you can force people that before you submit your files run this plugin perform all the qc checks submit your qc check report from experience it it still sometimes doesn't happen because of time pressures alternative is you can create a system that gets triggered automatically as soon as a file is submitted into any cloud platform it performs a qc check and reports back into dashboard format to all stakeholders involved much better system to implement the next important is human centered automation uh create automation as a tool for modelers not the other way around use automation as an enabler for modelers simplifying their workflow i have seen sometimes modeling guidelines are created for automation to work this happens because some kind of automation is not possible so the shortcut is to ask modeler to do something additional steps to ensure that automation works eventually modelers don't understand if automation is working for them 
or if they are working for the automation. Simply put, it is an automation that benefits human instead of automating processes, workflows, or tasks just because they can be automated. A human centric approach begins with questions. Should this be automated? How will this automation impact people? The last one in the list is the challenges with distribution. There will be continuous changes in any software that you create. You have to continuously add more features or update it to later set of design requirements. So plan very, very well with respect to distribution. Features like automatic updates should be implemented from day one. Otherwise, you end up having a huge upkeep cost to maintain all different, different versions of your software. So this takes us to almost our end of our presentation. No matter the size of the task, the time saved by eliminating extra work is very critical to become market leader. With automation, organizations can focus on adding more value in design and make better use of workforce. There are numerous benefits of automation. Reduction in time, reduction in error, scalability of your design team, smoother project execution, real-time monitoring, and many more. Thus, in order to scale your BIM team, automation can play a very important role. It will help you do more with less. Bringing productivity is very close to my heart. And I'm happy to chat with any one of you to discuss your project specific requirements. Please feel free to reach out. Thank you. And now open for any questions. We tend to keep webinars very short. Everyone can make use of 10, 15 minutes of extra time. Varun, I can see uh, some of the participants are willing to speak to you. So would you like to take it up? Yes. Okay. So hi, Richard. Uh, you can speak to Varun now. How's it going? I was just like, interested in knowing you seem to have automated the scan to BIM. I would just want to know what the accuracy levels are when you're bringing something in from a point cloud to Revit, and how do you control that from a quality checking point of view? Uh, so uh, uh, scan to bim is a probability-based machine learning-based system. We have specialized it specifically for use case of housing, uh, where uh, we focused on UK houses. Uh, we've automated walls, doors, windows, and floors. Uh, accuracy levels are currently at around 75-80% but uh, there is manual involvement required but like i said uh, if you have to convert 100 models a week we might have re required a very huge team because of automation we were help, uh, able to save good 5 to 10 hours of modeling which helped us significantly reduce the team size required for all the process so okay. in nutshell it's still a probability based uh, development uh, i'm happy to give you demonstration work show you uh, results on the data that you have no that would be very interesting to see thank you thank you uh, i have one question from pritam uh, pritam das is there any automation where we can make qc automatically and compare ifc drawings uh, with the, our prepared shop drawings and will identify any missing pieces uh, sorry, missing pipes and ducts, or even check the sizes. Uh, so, uh, Pritam, we have implemented different uh, checks for even IFC files. Uh, uh, I, for specifically comparing it against some drawings, uh, we may have to look at your data again. Uh, drawings can be in various uh, metadata. What is available in those drawings uh, is very important to be checked. Uh, 
we we for ifc files we have implemented checks like slope of the pipes uh, even uh, connectivity of different elements of the pipe um, we have implemented headroom checks stairway uh, uh, headroom uh, and so on so yes implementing automated checks on uh, ifc files is possible uh, for your exact use case um, we can work with the data uh, and demonstrate or discuss the requirement in detail uh, we have one question from krishna um, thank you uh, krishna uh, for attending my uh, his question is is apis is the future of bim uh my take on this uh, krishna is there has been a, a big shift in uh, company uh, companies and their operating style um, about 5 6 years ago every company was very protective about their data and their formats they did not want anyone to even open their file formats or they were very closed about uh, exchange of data but in past few years each of the companies have been very open to exchange of data things are moving in cloud every functionality is present in cloud so short answer is yes i mean uh, api and uh, moving things in cloud will be uh, very common uh, each of these companies will make it very easy to Uh, automate things uh, make information exchange very much possible uh, because that i feel is going to take construction industry to the next level uh we have one more question from piyush uh, how automation cost is in is compared with to manpower cost in short term and long term uh so uh like i said automation cost is high uh because uh, it takes a lot to come up with the right uh, automation uh, in the process uh that's why we need to take a look at things which have high impact and very repetitive in nature uh automation cost could be double so you you may not get uh much benefit for autom by automating very simple uh once in a while task um uh, i hope that answers your question piyush uh, uh i guess uh, we are almost done with the questions or else i can see people are still commenting on it uh maybe would you like to take it up varun yes uh so uh vidam uh to answer your a uh, question in specific detail about uh, comparing cd drawings and uh short drawings from revit uh i would suggest that uh, we probably uh, get, take a look at your data uh, i have come across many use cases where uh each of these files are prepared very differently uh what requires comparing what data is available ability to match uh, some kind of guid all of these are important uh, when we are comparing two files i'm happy to get on a session with you and talk more about it uh krishna that's a <laughs> good question uh, that is the vision converting modeling into complete automation but i'm sure uh, designers will come up with ever more challenging designs uh, so complete automation is still a distant future but we are actively chasing it uh, just to give you uh, uh, some context uh, like earlier photos were very plain uh, they were just uh, everyone used to put put up their photos on facebook and all these social media platforms very soon with machine learning uh, these platforms started automatically identifying the photos this is a photo of varun this is a photo of krishna and everything we want to do very similar with the point cloud data 
the point cloud are very difficult to handle and uh, have very less information, no metadata available with every point. Uh, machine learning can add that kind of information to the models, uh, but complete automation is something if, if, if someone cracks that, I, I'm sure it is going to be a big thing in the industry. Uh, just talking about a bit more, there were a lot of companies which were data entry companies they used to take uh, paper uh, trails of forms that have been hand filled and there were people reading those forms and typing those forms in computer. I think all such things are thing of past now. Uh, we, we probably might see something similar in the point cloud space and modeling as well. I think that's all we have. Great, great to receive all the all these questions and uh, Varun, you gave really insightful answers to everyone. I hope uh, it serves the purpose. And uh, we are looking forward to all of you uh, for our next webinar. Um, you know, stay tuned, follow us on LinkedIn and uh, do visit our website. We regularly publish articles related to BIM and uh, Varun, with your vision, uh, we are surely going to have a great, uh, you know, initiatives around uh, BIM and automation. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Jaitanya. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for joining. Thank you, Thank you very much. See you later. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, Balaji. Okay, that's it. Should we conclude? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I think Krishna and Pritam are still asking a few things. Uh, so, Krishna, I think uh, API can handle any number of drawings. Um, we we ourselves, like I mentioned in the uh, in the uh, presentation, we can handle. Uh, or process 500 plus files more than that if required all automatically processes within overnight like in 10 hours it would generate data from everything i don't think number of drawings or number of inputs are anywhere a problem um, thank you thank you pritam for attending Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Varun. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Stay well.